Hey everyone, it's Brandy and welcome back to my channel, Brandy Janae's Bookshelf. Today I am here to do, I guess, like my final wrap up of final stats video of 2021 this is going to be a combination of my quarter four or my last three months of 2021 stats as well as a general overview of all of my stats for the entire year and how things ended up along with that and really the last thing that i wanted to show off was kind of doing a goal check-in let's go ahead and quickly go over some of my quarter four specific stats so over the last three months of the year i read a total of 71 books and over those 71 books i read 17,106 pages 29 of the 71 books that i read were print 30 of them were ebook, 9 of them were audio, and then 39 of them were rereads. So those were the few stats that I wanted to briefly mention for the last three months of the year. And now I'm going to go ahead and get into all of the rest of my stats for the entire year. So I did also do a little breakdown of what I finished and just smaller things before I get to the actual charts, which I will kind of explain or go through a few of the things that you have haven't already seen in previous videos so in 2021 I finished a total of 220 books which I am surprised and happy with then over those 220 books I read 64,002 pages 120 of them were print 57 of the books that I read were ebooks and then 49 were audio my average rating for the entire year was 3.81 stars and then finally in 2021 I hauled a total of 133 books so moving on to the charts and graphs from the reading spreadsheet that I used this year starting off with the books I read per month and as you can see at the top of this chart it does say that it's including any DNF I had like a range each month that I was usually reading between it looks like it tends to be between like 13 to 20 books a month and then obviously my biggest month this year was December that's mainly because if you haven't already seen my December wrap up I read an entire manga series which was 36 volumes plus three other mangas moving over into my pages read per month this is also including any DNFs for each month looking at it some of the months page counts are higher even though the book count is lower but I think that's because those were months I was reading like fantasy like big fantasy books or things like that we're gonna go over into reading method I'm not gonna go through each individual number but this is a better depiction of how my reading actually went so I have it marked by physical audio ebook and then mixed media which I'm actually kind of surprised that more of this wasn't mixed media but I think a lot of that had to do with the amount of manga that I read this year. We're gonna move over into the book breakdown starting off with genre. As we can see <laughs> the majority of what I read was manga. Now no manga isn't a genre it's more of a formatting thing but that is the category that it was in in the spreadsheet and I didn't want to have to try to figure out how to change things and then change the way it tracked to make sure that it showed up correctly but I'm not surprised by that I kind of was hoping to read more of other things I think the thing that I'm the most disappointed in with this genre section is the fact that I only read 14 like strictly romance books this year um I do see a couple other things that I wish were more um like that I have read more of but I think the fact that my reading was so dominated by 
manga this year is what the big thing is i want to even that out more in the coming years because while i do enjoy manga i don't want to cut out on reading other things because i'm reading so much manga after once again rambling for a little bit too long we're going to move over into the length of books read this one another one that i just didn't really care too much about i i think i really just tracked this because it was part of the spreadsheet you can see it looks like once again the majority of the books that i read were between 150 and 200 100 pages and you know guess what that's because I read a lot of mangas um I did I think read a couple of novellas as well um but the majority of the books that I read once again like I said manga and then moving over into star ratings another one not really that surprised by um for the majority of the year four stars were in the lead and then next moving over into age category this i think i am the most surprised by i am still quite shocked that over 50 percent of what i read was young adult but also i have to think about the fact like i said that a lot of this probably is manga however i am happy with the fact that my adult section it's a decent amount it's not quite 50 percent but you know 42 percent is actually very good especially considering the fact that i have not read like i said a lot of romance so i only have a few more the next one that i'm going to be talking about is how i got the books that i read as you can see the biggest section of books that i read were books that i already own i think for the first time in a while i've had books that i've borrowed like I said, I've been making pretty good use of the library. So I'm pretty happy with that. It was actually 42 of the books that I read were borrowed. So that is really exciting for me. Other than the ones that you can see on the list, I have two books that I read that were eARCs. And then next to that, I have four books that I read were, that I got from Kindle Unlimited. I feel like I need to make more use of that because I have been paying monthly for Kindle Unlimited for years and I feel like I do not use it nearly enough. The last stat that you can't see is two of the books that I read were gifted. I'm pretty sure that both of those were books that I got for my birthday and I read those this year. I will be simplifying this for myself moving forward just because I feel like I don't need each of these little individual sections. It's just that's the way the spreadsheet was set up. Moving on to rereads versus first time reads. Um, most of the books that I read for 2021 were first time reads. I do re enjoy rereading books, especially lately, but I also know that I have tons of books that I can be exploring for the first time. So I just want to make sure that that stays like a decent balance. And then the final graph that I needed to show off was my series versus standalones. So as you can see, overwhelmingly, the majority of the books that I read were from a series. Because I like to read fantasy along with manga, a lot of the books that I read tend to be series. It looks like over the entire year, I finished a total of six series. Now I'm going to move over into my five star reads for the last quarter. I probably should have did this before going over those end of the year stats. That would have made a lot more sense. I had three books that I ended up giving five stars in the last three months of the year. Starting off with the first one that I finished. But this one was actually a novella from a series that I was rereading. This was the first time that I read this specific novella and this is Magic Dreams by Alona Andrews and this is from the Kate Daniel series. So this one is following Jim and Dolly. There is a case of like there was people or shapeshifters that went missing in one of their guard houses and Jim is trying to figure it out and something happens to him he doesn't know what he goes to Dolly and a lot of shenanigans going on. The next one that I have to talk about is Ace of Spades by Farida Abike Amide. This is following Chiamaka and Devon which are the two characters that we have on our cover. They both attend the same school and long story short they are the only two black students at the school and they're going into their senior year and they're starting to or not starting to but they've been thinking about college and they're trying to like get through this last stage of high school so that they can move on and they're thinking about what is the best thing to do in this final year of high school to make them look the best that they can to the schools that they're trying to apply to. Devon is actually he's a scholarship student so he's just trying to get through he's into music and he's trying to I think apply to Juilliard and he's composing his composition to submit to the school. 
Chiamaka comes from a wealthy family. She has done everything in her power to be like the it girl at school. But as the year is really getting started, there are text messages that start going around the entire school that is revealing secrets about Chiamaka and Devon. And it starts to become a little bit more serious when there are secrets that could possibly affect their futures. And it's really about them trying to figure out who is behind the text messages, really what's going on and why. And then finally, the last five star book that I have to talk about, which I'm pretty sure, like I feel like this got four stars, but I checked, I double checked and I wrote it down. So we're going to talk about it. And that is The Heart Principle by Helen Huang. This one is following a character named Anna Sun, who is a violinist. A video of her went viral on YouTube and ever since then she has had troubles with succeeding with her work which is being a violinist she had these amazing opportunities but she just hasn't been able to play the way she used to after one of her therapy sessions she goes home to or goes to hang out with her boyfriend and he ends up telling her that basically that he wants to break up so that he can try seeing other women he tells her well uh, you would never do that or something along those lines and she decides that she's gonna you know go against that and she signs up for a dating app and that's where Quan comes in they both end up matching on this app they go on this date and Anna's intention is to like just go and have a one night stand but things don't end up working out that way and they end up developing this friendship and with the intention of eventually having that one night stand and then that being the end of it but Anna is so nervous in the situation that things obviously keep getting extended out. And it's just following their relationship and her finding out things about herself. Also dealing with family issues. The last thing that I wanted to do today was a goal check-in. And this is for 2021. So I, I pretty much wrote down everything here. So I'm going to go through through these pretty quickly and just whether or not I finished them. My main goal for the year was to read 150 books or my stretch goal of 200, 200 books, which I definitely did complete that. And the next goal that I had was to spend less on books slash new releases mainly. I feel like I did this for the most part because thinking about what I bought compared to previous years, like thinking about it monthly especially, I felt like the past few years before this, I was getting the same amount of books in a single month that I got over several months or more this year or in 2021. So I think that in my mind, what I had in mind for this, I definitely accomplished. Third goal was to be more organized with content and that was like planning out videos ahead of time, book filming, editing as much as possible ahead of time and scheduling. I was doing really good with that I think at the beginning of the year and then things changed. I feel like I'm getting back to that point but it didn't last throughout the whole year and I just think that that had more so to do with me being overwhelmed with other things either at work or in personal life. The next goal that I had was my 12 must reads of 2021 which I'm going to go through those in a second. Five was to continue slash finish series. I did mention that I probably wasn't going to be able to do this until I got all of my books from storage. I don't have any control over when that's going to happen so I wasn't able to do that. The next goal that I have was to interact with the community. Once again I think this is another one that I started with but I didn't get do nearly as much as I wanted mostly because at a certain point in the year I just like stopped watching booktube videos altogether. I got um, a bit overwhelmed and then I think I got into like kind of a video watching slump when it came to books and I was just like I don't want to watch this at all. I was watching other videos but not booktube videos and then my last goal was to read every day of the year. Um, I think I might have had one more but it wasn't really like a trackable goal so I didn't include that but anyway oh I think that was like my my TBR game or not my TBR game but the game that I play in my TBRs each month. The main reason I said that this was one of my goals was because in the app that I'm using which is Bookly if you guys care um there was like a goal <laughs> I know this is gonna sound really stupid but there was a goal there that said read for every day of the year basically and I had completed every other goal that I could except for that one um I'm pretty sure that I finished it but 
I hit that goal because I had days left over from 2020 that were counted so I finished that before the end of I think by by the beginning of December I had finished that so I think I read every day in 2021 I'm pretty sure I did but if I didn't it's not a huge deal because I was doing it for a specific reason and I completed the reason that I was doing it for so um that's all the goals <laughs> whether or not I completed them now I need to change my battery really quick because it's about to die and I'm gonna go over my 12 must reads and what is going on with that I will link the video up above if you haven't already seen it but this year I decided I wanted to have 12 books that were basically kind of like a mandatory TBR for myself so one book each month for the year I have also made another one for 2022 which is already out if you guys are curious what's on that list but we're gonna quickly go through this list and I'll let you guys know either whether or not I read them DNF'd or just didn't pick them up at all and then if I did DNF because I think it might be a couple of those whether or not I will be trying them again so starting off with the first one that I mentioned in the video which was the Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon I was the most intimidated by this book I did not read it not because I didn't want to I did check it out from the library it took forever for the hold to come in from the library but when I got it I was in the middle of like so many other things that I kind of forgot that I had the copy and then it went back to the library and um it was another exceedingly long wait I did not get to this one but I do plan on trying to read this because this is a book that I do own so I obviously want to get to it at some point the next one on the list was The City of Brass by S.A. Chakraborty I did start this one I got I think a couple hundred maybe a hundred pages into it I ended up putting it down basically I DNF'd it but I would like to try to read this again I don't know if that'll be this year necessarily I think I need to give it a little bit of time so the next thing was Cinder by Marissa Meyer I read this one this year I think I read it in like December no 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 I started in in, in December I actually did finish this up in January so this should be in my mid-month wrap-up although I didn't technically finish it in 2021 um it's done now the next one that I had was Never Night by Jake Kristoff I did not read this one either I actually have this one on my TBR for January number five was Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lainey Taylor I did in fact read this first book number six was Red Rising by Pierce Brown which is an adult sci-fi I did read this one I actually went on to read book two and I have book three and four on my TBR for January number seven was A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab I also read this one number eight was one of the two N.K. Jemisin series starters that I had and the one that I ended up going with was The Hundred Thousand Kingdoms so I read that one. Number nine was The Girl Who Drank the Moon by I think this one was Kelly Barnhill. I did finally read this one. Number 10 was A Song of Race and Ruin by Roseanne A. Brown. Another one I did read. Number 11 was another YA fantasy and that was Kingdom of Souls by Raina Barron. I did get to that one. And then finally the last one that I had on my 12 months reads of 2021 was To Sleep in a Sea of Stars by Christopher Paolini and I did also read this one. If you haven't already seen I did do like a full everything that I read in 2021 where the ratings are in there. Obviously I'm not discussing in that video about the books but all of them are in there with ratings so you can see around what time I read them and what I rated them I guess. So I think that that's everything that I have for this video about stats. Let me know down in the comments what were some of the things that you were looking to track throughout the year and what the final results of that was about the end of the year. Hopefully that made sense um, but yeah let me know that down in the comments. Also make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed as well as subscribing if you haven't already thank you guys so much for watching and i will see you again in the next one bye